What do you say? What do you know, stupids? Welcome to the Bubcast episode six. We are getting ready to rock and roll. Um, we're going to preview college football. We're going to preview the current college football matchups this weekend. We're going to preview NFL. And we're going to get into a bunch of stuff. Hockey season starting, so I'm going to throw some hockey into this. So, what do you say? What do you know? Let's get it started. Um, week four. Week four college football had some great matchups, a lot of top ten plays. Um, looked good. Uh, Colorado. Uh, played Oregon, Ohio State played Notre Dame. We had a great bunch of matchups. We'll go ahead and go through those. So Colorado, Oregon. Uh, I know you all probably already have seen a lot of hate for Colorado, a lot of a lot of negativity. So not going to come from me negativity. They did get waxed. It looked horrible. The way Colorado handled it, I think it went really well. They took the took the chin, took the L on the chin. Didn't really look good offensively. Um, first real competition, I would say. I mean, Colorado State, TCU, they really weren't competitors. They beat Colorado State by seven, so I could see why this would be like the first type of competition. Um, they were down 35 at 0 half, so pretty much was over at halftime. Oregon wasn't playing. Um, Colorado had 199 yards total offense. Offense wasn't clicking. Uh, his son struggled. Oregon locked him down. Um, so it, 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 it looked... It looked rough, but Colorado, you know, they play. USC comes into town this weekend, so we'll see how they rebound and look after that. So, um, you know, hopefully nothing too crazy. Um, 12 penalties for 106 yards for Colorado also can't be done. You know, they, they, they can't give up that many penalty yards. It, you know, doesn't look, can't, can't, that's something that can't be done. Um. USC comes to Boulder. Like I said, it's going to be a great game. Uh, I expect another blowout. I expect Colorado to get ran out of the building. I don't think they're going to stop Caleb Williams. If they can't stop Bo Nix, they're not going to stop Caleb Williams. So, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. Deion Sanders, you know, took it, like I said, took it on the chin. Was like, hey, you better get, get at us now because it's the worst we're going to be. Uh, Georgia blew out UAB. Uh, started, started slow. Georgia's been starting slow most of their games all year. They haven't really been Georgia. And then they just put it on UAB. Carson Beck had 338 yards, three tutties, 582 total yards on offense. So Georgia's starting to get clicked, but they're just not they're not starting out gas to the pedal. They're not just revving the engine. They're kind of just stalling and waiting for something to happen. Uh, three turnovers for Georgia, which is unrare for them, un unlike, unlike them, I should say. It didn't look like they were normal Georgia. They're going to start getting SEC play here very really soon. And then those games are going to be, you know, they're, you know, they're pretty much out of the cupcake area. They're going to morph into the SEC area and start playing teams that, you know, we're going to want to give them the best they can give them. So, Michigan State beat Rutgers. Michigan, I'm sorry, Michigan beat Rutgers 31-7. Uh, first Hall, Hall Ball's first game back. Uh, score was 14-7 halftime. Same type of thing with Michigan. Michigan hasn't looked like Michigan. Um, I know Hall Ball's been out. First game back. But they haven't really gone off to Michigan Center. They haven't played anybody. They, they've looked mid slash average against all these teams. Rutgers, you know, Rutgers was a 24 point underdog. And, you know, they, they, they covered, they worked, it was a push. Um, but neither Michigan or Oregon have, I'm sorry, Georgia have looked good. McCaffrey had 214 yards in a tutty. Uh, Blake Crone, 97 yards, two tutties. 400 total, 415 total yards. So Michigan's offense looked good. McCaffrey and Blake Chrome, you know, that dual-headed offense quarterback running back combo looked good. They need some explosion. They need some, hey, we're Michigan. We're here to, you know, we're here to give it to teams and, and look like what we need to look like. So they, they did not look like Michigan. Either did Georgia, so we'll see how that looks. Um, Texas did look like Texas. Texas blew out Baylor. I told you all that that was going to be a trap game. Baylor plays well at home. Um, it's upset city. Texas looked like Texas. Uh, Ewers had 293 yards in a tutty. Johnson, Brooks, 18 carries, 100 yards, two tutties. And then Texas had five, over 500 yards total offense. So Texas looked like they were rolling. They're going to get into the same thing. They're going to get in the Big 12 play and start playing teams. They're going to want their number. And it's going to start to not become as easy for uh, Texas. But they looked good. FSU outlast Clemson and OT. Clemson had them the entire game. It was Clemson's game to win slash lose, and of course they lost. They missed a 29-yard field goal. That kid is probably having a tough time. Clemson looked like the better team. FSU looked like a mid, not over-the-top team. They did not look like 
the FSU that beat LSU. I don't know what to think about this game. I don't know if FSU's for real, this game. I mean, it was a tough matchup. Clemson's not who they once were, but they're still a good team. FSU played them well. It's on the road in Death Valley. It's a tough game. So I don't know really what to build off this. I don't know if to, to, to take more FSU and say, have they are they for real? Am I giving them a green light for a great win? I'm kind of, you know, letting the ACC play it out. You know, FSU plays uh, Florida. Their ACC competition is not the strongest after Clemson, so we'll see what they look like. Clem FSU had 22 yards rushing, and Clemson had 146. So FSU's run game was non-existent. That can't continue. If that continues, they're going to get run out of the building by Duke. They're going to they're going to have tough games in the ACC if they can't run the ball. FSU gave up 429 total offense. So their defense had some holes in it. Gave Clemson opportunities, but then Clemson ended up shooting themselves in the foot. Mismanaged the last 30 seconds of the game. They're at the 50-yard line and just needed a few yards, a couple plays for an attempted field goal, even though he had missed the one prior um, from like 29 yards. They mishandled that horribly, did not look good. Gave FSU that game. Clemson, let's see what they do. I don't know what kind of outcome this season's going to have for them. I didn't expect it to be as this bad, per se. I knew they were going to struggle, but I, I don't know. They, they may lose a couple more games, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if Clemson kind of moves on from a couple pieces and kind of does their thing. So keep an eye out for that. UNC, USC dominates Arizona State. Caleb Williams, 322 yards, three tutties. Um, his main guy, Rice, seven receptions, 133 yards, two tutties, and they're running back on 154 yards on 14 carries. USC's offense is, is, is there. Their defense could use some work. They're giving up some touchdowns and some big plays that some mediocre teams that they've been playing. San Diego State, San Jose State, excuse me, had some points. Um, Arizona State had some points. So, <clears throat> so USC's going to have to figure that defense out because these Pac-12 teams – some of these mid mid level teams can put on some points on the board, and if USC's defense gives up what they're giving, it, it could make games that need to be easily won a lot harder to win. Um, my boys, Ohio State, got it out. I did not talk much about that game. Uh, being a biased fan, I did not want to go either way. You know, I kind of like just want to talk about it and not really pick a winner. Um, comeback win on the road. Both teams looked great. It was a defensive battle for a while there. Notre Dame started to get it together in the fourth quarter. They had some real good drives. They drove. They had a 13-play drive to take the lead, and McCord needed a minute-and-a-half drive for the win. They had a 4th and 7 and a 3rd and 19 on that game-winning drive. Saw a lot from Ohio State. Saw a lot from Notre Dame. I don't think Notre Dame, this isn't a negative for them in the loss column. It's a, it's a top-10 loss. It's at home, which hurts. I would still give them consideration for playoff. They still have, a tough, they still have some tough teams to play. Ohio State. Didn't look perfect. Their defense struggled, gave up a lot of yards on the run, on the ground. OSU's offense looked okay. Marvin Harrison was non-existent, and they still got it done. So what kind of rotation can we get with Harrison to get him back in the play to see what kind of offensive stuff we can do? Um, at the moment, it just it it's very plain vanilla, if I may say, uh, offensively. Um, they, like I said, Notre Dame has the ability to boost um, their resume with wins. Uh, great win for Ohio State. They're on a bye week this week, so they get some time, and then they're going to they're going to have some uh, Big Ten matchups. You know, Wisconsin. They've got teams that um, on the road are tough. You know, on paper it doesn't look like that, but you always have these games that that could possibly um, uh, give them give them trouble on the road. Um, Notre Dame uh, plays at Duke this weekend. They play number five, USC at home, and they go to Clemson. So those three wins, you know, they win those. You know, I don't know if losing the second one cuts them out completely from the college football playoff. Recent history says so. So do they have to win all three of these games? I would imagine so. I mean, the college football playoff is tough with two losses, especially with a non-conference. Notre Dame, they're not going to get a conference championship game. So that USC game is going to be fantastic. It's going to be a home game for them, so let's see what they look like. Um, no turnovers from record looked good. So, Penn State blew out Iowa 31 0. Um, Alar had 160 yards, four tutties. Lambert Smith, eight receptions, six, seven yards, and a tutty. Uh, PSU had Iowa to 76 total yards. PSU's defense for real. Now, I mind you, it's against Iowa, but Penn State has to come to Columbus. Penn State has to play some Big Ten teams. So, 
that may not be the um, normal Penn State, but they're in the top 10. So uh, right now they're a team. So let's see what kind of, you know, if they can keep this going. Um, 1.2 yards per rush and 3.5 for pass play against for, uh, Penn State gave up on Iowa. That's just absolutely insane. Five total completions. Iowa looked horrible all the way across the board. Just absolutely horrible. See if Penn State's really got some tough matchups, so we'll kind of see them. Washington blew out Cal 59-32. Again, Washington, their offense looks fantastic. Their defense has given up points. Washington can't give up 32 points to USC. They'll end up losing that game. Uh, Michael Penix Jr., 304 yards, four tighties and an interception. Looked good. Um, uh, his main receiver, Jalen Polk, eight receptions, 127 yards, two tighties. Washington needs to fix penalties, 98 for nine penalties for 83 yards. Can't have that happen. Um, gave up 502 yards. Like I said, Washington's offense is top tier. Their defense cannot give up 502 yards to everyone that comes to play them. They can't get to a shootout every week because eventually their offense is going to have a hiccup. They haven't had one yet, but if they play a team like USC, they're not going to be able to just allow 502 yards to Caleb Williams. They're going to get ran out of their building. Um, Force three turnovers. So, you know, that's good. That's a nice stepping stone for their defense, but their defense has to be able to do something to control the point total they're giving up and the amount of yards. Like I said, their offense hasn't had a hiccup, but they're not going to be able to do those numbers every single week, especially USC and Oregon, uh, Washington State and Oregon State. Utah and UCLA had a battle. They are Utah is still without their quarterback. I'm pretty sure he's coming back this week. Not 100% sure if he is. Um, looks good. Uh, it was a 14-7 game. <clears throat> Uh, Utah got a pick six the first play of the game, so that kind of set the tone for the game. No real offense from either one of those teams. It was like I said, four teams. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I guess it was a 14-7 game, so not really much um, there offensively. Neither team could run the ball. Utah had two yards of carry, and UCLA didn't even have half a yard of carry on average for the run. So um, Cam Rising needs to come back. Both offense struggled. It was a very plain vanilla game, so... We'll see how that goes, but like I said, Utah-UCLA was not a barn burner by any means. It was more of a defensive battle. LSU-Arkansas was probably the second, third best game of the week. Uh, kick game-winning field goal to beat Arkansas. Arkansas is tough. LSU takes the gold boot home. Arkansas played them tough. Like I said, Arkansas is going to be one of those teams that can be upset. You know, they could, they, could, they could beat an Alabama. They could beat teams that, or make it difficult for teams that are supposed to run right through them. LSU, Daniels had 320 yards, four tutties, and an interception. Looked good. Thomas Jr. had five receptions, 133 yards, two touchdowns. He had 26, almost 27 yards of catch. So LSU's offense looks good. Their defense, like I said, back to these teams that are dominating on offensive end. Their defense is letting them hang out to dry. So they have to figure that out. Like I said, LSU cannot, against FSU, they gave up all those points against FSU, and their offense struggled. That's that's perfect recipe for offense finally of high-powered offense struggles, and their defense leaves them out to dry. They end up losing that game. It's lopsided. Um, Arkansas's K.J. Jefferson had 289 yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions. LSU and Arkansas both had over five, 400 yards offense. LSU had 509. All very offensive SEC classic bash barn battle. It looked good. Arkansas possessed the ball for 34 minutes. They had the ball about 12 minutes longer than LSU. LSU, like I said, they're, they're way where they need to be. They had the tough loss. They won the games they need to win, but they got some things to figure out. Their defense can't give up all these points, that type of thing. But I think they'll eventually work it out. Alabama outlasts Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin still hasn't beaten Nick Saban. Ole Miss led seven at six and a half. Alabama is still up and down. Their quarterback is, I think, finally set in stone. I think they're going to allow him to just do his thing. But they're so up and down still. They're not really consistent. They're not the normal Alabama. And then Alabama outscored Ole Miss 18 to three in the second half. Um, Lane Kiffin didn't have any answers. Their defense bailed them out. Their offense is just not Alabama offense. It's going to be real tough to play teams: Georgia, Florida, Auburn. So Alabama, like I said, there's a lot of teams this year that their offense is either subpar or getting there, and their defense is bailing them out. And on the vice versa of that, you've got teams that their offense is through the roof and their defense is struggling. So this is not this college football season. You have a lot, don't have a lot of you have a lot of teams that are like coulda, woulda, shoulda, what if. You have a lot of what ifs this year. Normally, it's plain black and white. You have A, B, and C teams and everyone else. You've got teams that, yeah, they look good now, but what's the possibility of a hiccup and that type of thing? So, um, he looked, the Bama quarterback, Jalen Milrow, looked okay. 225 yards, one tutty, one interception. Um, 
Jake McClellan, 17 carries, 105 yards, one touchdown. Um, very plain offense, you know, nothing crazily statistics that pop out that you want to like shake your head at. Um, Old Miss struggled, 56 total yards rushing, that's not going to get it done, 244 passing. Old Miss was 3 and 14 on third down, also not going to get it done. So Old Miss's offense struggled. Who knows if Old Miss's offense was able to get a few things together, what that game would have looked like. So, um, but Old Miss's offense going to get it going. That was their, uh, that was kind of their, uh, their final nail in the coffin per se. Their offense, uh, their offense couldn't get it done, um, and their defense held Bama at bay, but it, Bama was just too much. Oklahoma holds Cincy to six points. Um, QB Dylan Gabriel had 322 yards and a touchdown. Both offenses struggled. OU's defense held out. OU is a big, classic Big 12 defense. I think they they have one of the better Big 12 defenses. I know Cincinnati's not a barn burner, light them up offense, but Oklahoma held uh, held Cincy to six points. You know that's the type of thing. If the offense struggled, but their defense is rock solid. You know their offense struggled 20 points, but their defense kept them at six. So that's another, like I said, another offense struggles, defense there. Da 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 da. It's very you know this this season's gonna get down to the wire. Once we get the Conference play. We'll see what it looks like. See how it goes. Um, Oklahoma needs some offensive firepower. They need some deep balls. They need something to get that Big 12 offense going. You got defenses that are allowing, you know, 45 points. Oklahoma's got to put some points on the board in the Big 12, or they're gonna, they're they're gonna get run out of their building. UNC beats Pitt. UNC looks good. UNC is a good ACC team. Duke, UNC, a rivalry in basketball. They're gonna have one in football. Uh, Drake May went for 296 yards and a touchdown. JJ Jones had six receptions, 117 yards. Um, UNC had 77 yards total rushing. They got to get a rush game. They can't just rely on him. Like I said, you got to be, especially in the ACC, where you're playing teams that are potentially going to have, um, you're going to have all this stuff going on. You got to really figure out. Um, you got to run the ball. In the ACC, you can't just be a one one tier offense. You got to be able to run the ball. So they got to they got to figure that out. We'll need more. Um, Pitt had 84 yards and penalties, and both teams struggled on third down. So Pitt, Pitt's, you know, Pitt's kind of, you know, getting, getting through and kind of just figuring out who they are as a team. Struggled. Uh, Duke blew out UConn. Riley Leonard had 248 yards and a touchdown. Duke had 248 total receiving yards as a team. Uh, 74 rush yards need more. Like I said, Duke needs to be able to run the ball. UNC needs to run the ball. You can't rely on your offense. You can't rely on your quarterback to throw for 500 yards every game. So these teams need to figure out a rush game. Um, held UConn to 200 yards. UConn is is not anyone specifically good, so forced two turnovers. So yeah, UConn did look good. UConn was actually UConn's actually not a good team at all. Miami blew out Temple 41-7. Tyler Van Dyke 220 yards, three touchdowns. Um, Miami is in the ACC. Um, 500 total yards offense. Like I said, these ACC Big 12 teams, our offense is going to get 500 yards. What can their defense do? So. Uh, defense forced three turnovers for Miami and held Temple to 11 yards rushing. So Miami's defense looked good. Now, mind you, it's Temple, so let's not get crazy. Let's not run a parade out for Miami. These ACC teams aren't playing anybody, and the ACC teams that are in the bottom of the tier and they're giving up X amount of yards, it's not something to um, put on the resume as well, they're going to be okay. So these UNCs, these Miamis, these teams that once they, these Dukes, once Duke plays Miami, once Duke plays UNC, and they give up four, four, 40 yards rushing, you got to see what the outcome of that game is going to look like. Tennessee blows out UT, uh, Texas San Antonio 45-14. Um, it was a rebound game after they lost to Florida. Milton had 209 yards, two touchdowns, um, 300 total yards rushing for the team for Tennessee. UTSA had the ball for 37 minutes compared to 22, so UTSA held the ball long. Tennessee... Um, it was a rebound game. Let's see what they look like. You know, they lost to Florida. They still got some SEC games. It was kind of a rebound game. Florida did not look good against Charlotte. They only it was 22-7. ETN had was non-existent with 48 yards. Um, the receiver Ricky Pearsall had six receptions, 104 yards. Florida had two fumbles. Um, uh, Florida was one for nine on third down and held Charlotte a total of 211 yards. So their defense again bailed them out. I'm not saying Charlotte would have ended up beating them because I think Florida would have done enough to beat Charlotte, but. How close this game was, it wasn't a, it wasn't a lot. Florida was a 21-point favorite. Florida's got to fix their third down efficiency. They gotta run the ball. Like I said, they're gonna they're gonna have those Utah games like they had earlier in the year, and it's not gonna look good. They're ranked, they got it done, they beat Tennessee, but these other teams in the SEC, they play like that, they're gonna get ran out. So some other uh, some other FBS wins will kind of end it on that note. So uh, three and one Wisconsin beat Purdue, um, four and one Air Force 
beat San, Ho uh, San, San, Jose, San Jose State University, blah. Uh, 4-0 Louisville beat Boston College, Iowa State beat Oklahoma State, 4-0 Liberty beat FIU, number 4 Syracuse beat Army, Texas A&M beat on the road, beat Auburn on the road, 27-10, uh, 4-0 Kentucky beat Vandy, 45-28, and 4-0 Maryland beat Michigan State. Uh, Michigan State just fired their head coach, well-deserved, well-needed, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see if we can Michigan State can get off that and see if they can still salvage the season. They got some Big Ten matchups. So we've got some 4-0 teams. We've got Air Force, Louisville, Maryland, and Syracuse, all in the FBS undefeated. So shout out to them. Maryland, are they pretenders or con pretenders or contenders? That will be the question. Um, Maryland's gonna play some Big Ten teams that are gonna that possibly could run them out of their building, or so we'll have to see what they look like. Right now they're 4-0. I'd wreck it. I'd let it go. You know, let it ride. Let's see. Uh, let's see what they can do. Um, South Carolina beat Mississippi State 37-0. 4-0 James Madison, another FBS team undefeated, beat Utah State 45-38. And Fresno State beat Kent State 53-10. And Fresno State's also undefeated. So um, that's uh, you know some game, some teams to look out for in the FBS. You know, we're not all top 25 here. So let's go over some week five games that I think are going to be some great matches. We got some great matches this week. We got 10 Utah at Oregon State. Oregon State is a favorite at that game. That is, um, that's great. I don't know if Cam Rising is coming back for Utah. I'll put it on Twitter once I get clarification if he's playing or not. That's going to be a great game. Uh, number eight, USC at Colorado. USC is a 21 half point favorite. I think they're going to blow Colorado out. If Colorado makes it interesting, Maybe we can shift our table and see, hey, maybe they can hang. But if USC does what Oregon does, I think Colorado is is going to get put to bed in conversation of, in their first year, how they handled the, their big game opponents. Um, Florida at Kentucky, that is going to be a great game. Tune in for that. That is a you, Kentucky's a one-point favorite. That's going to be a great game. That is going to be a marquee matchup for Gators. Kentucky's on the brink of being rape, ranked. Um Florida's on the road. It's another tough win, another builder for their resume. It's a 4-0 Kentucky team on the road. Florida can get it done. That's going to boost their resume. You have Georgia at Auburn. Georgia's a 14.5 point favorite. Watch out for a trap game. Auburn's got the energy at home. Georgia hasn't been starting off their, their, their games hot. They've started off slow. Keep an eye on Auburn. Maybe Auburn comes out with a couple hits to the chin and see how Georgia responds. So keep an eye out for that Auburn-Georgia game as a trap game for Georgia. Tech Number 24, Kansas at 3, Texas. Texas at home. I like Texas at home. I think this is going to be a good game. 14 half point for Texas. I think Texas will get it done. Kansas will make it interesting. They're 4-0. They're ranked. Let's see what they can do. Let's make it close. Keep it close, and that will help boost Kansas. But I really think Texas will win 17, 14 points or more. you got LSU at Ole Miss. Another great game. Ole Miss is at home. They just lost to Alabama. They know that this game could help boost their SEC New Year's Six Bowl. Their playoff is probably null and void, but let's see if they can get a playoff game. LSU, a tough matchup for them. A great resume builder. Let's see what that kind of looks like for them. Big, big, big game. I got number 11, Notre Dame at 17, Duke. Notre Dame's a six-point favorite. Duke is 4-0. This will be a great home game for Notre, for Duke. Excuse me. It's going to be a crazy matchup. The, that, that field's going to be packed. People are going to be pulling for Duke. Let's see what Notre Dame can do after getting knocked down. They got hit in the chin. They had a tough loss at home. Is it a hangover game? Watch, watch out for Duke. I'm not saying I'm not writing a check for Duke at the moment, but watch out for an upset game. Watch out for Duke beating Notre Dame at home. That home energy they played really well against Clemson. Those fans bring it. They're a football school now. The energy is there. Keep an eye on that game. That's my upset game. I'll go ahead and sign off. You know what? I'll sign off. Write it out. The Bubcast has. Duke beating Notre Dame at home. Notre Dame gets a second loss, and then they'll start to rebuild and put some pieces at home. 4-0 Louisville, NC State. Louisville's a three-and-a-half point favorite. Keep an eye out for NC State. That's a trap game. NC State plays well at home. Louisville, you know, they're 4-0. They really haven't played anybody. NC State's got a good team, good defense. They're at home. Let's keep an eye out for that. And then 4-0 Syracuse, four, I'm excuse me, 4-0 Army. Sorry. 4-0 Syracuse at Clemson. Um, Clemson's 0-2 in the ACC. Clemson's only a 6.5 point favorite. Let's see. Is Syracuse for real? Can Syracuse hang with the big dogs? I'm excited to see that. Um, I think Clemson's going to win that game, but it would be nice to see what Syracuse looks like in the ACC. You know, they're 4-0, but they're 4-0 for the teams they beat. So let's see if they can give Clemson a run for their money. If Clemson loses this game, I think that's rebuild time. I think 
if Clemson goes down 0-3 in the ACC, they become one of those Wake Forest S teams in the ACC. We'll have to see some figure things out. So, USF goes to Navy. It's going to be a great game. Anytime you go to Navy, that's a great game to watch. Um, and number 23, Mizzou at Vandy. Another trap game. Mizzou just got ranked. They're undefeated. They go to Vandy. Vanderbilt is a, a mid-team in the SEC. They're not that bad. They're not that good. They're right in the middle. They can, they can give Mizzou a run for their money. It's at home. It's at Vandy. They play well. Keep an eye out for that being a trap game. So we'll go through top 10, and I'll go kind of give you an update of the top 25, and then we'll jump right into the NFL stuff. So the top 10, we've got Georgia, Michigan, Texas, OSU, FSU, Penn State, Washington, USC, Oregon, and Utah. Nothing really changed. Um, we had a few moves with Ohio State winning and or, uh, Notre Dame dropping out. Well, they were in the top 15, but they, no, they're in the top 10. And they dropped out of the top 10 with that loss. Um, they're still, they're 11, so they're not horribly gone. Um, Biggest moves, we got Washington State moved up 5 to number 16, Oregon State went down 5 to unranked, and Old Miss went down to, um, I'm sorry, Oregon State went down 5, Old Miss went down 5, they're both still ranked in the top 25. Um, unranked to ranked, you have 4-0 Mizzou at 23, 4-0 Kansas at 24, and 4-0 Fresno State at 25. So you have some three unranked teams that, went, that are 4-0 that are now ranked. And you've got Colorado, Iowa, and UCLA drop from the top 25. So that's kind of the uh, college update for you. Um, I'm going to be posting um, the college football predictions and scores of the games this weekend on Twitter. So the FBS, my FBS record is 144 and 70. So FBS doing well, and I'm 54 and 38. My top 25. So I'll be posting that on the whiteboard on Twitter at the Bubcast underscore. So keep an eye out for that um, tomorrow. Um, so anytime after that. So let's go into the NFL. NFL, not really any big surprises. Um, 49ers beat the Giants last Thursday night, 30-12. to 12. 49ers offense dominated per huge. Purdy went off for 310 yards, two tutties. McCaffrey, 18 carries, 85 yards, one touchdown. And then Samuel. So that three-headed monster uh, just dominated. Uh, Giants offense struggled. Daniel Jones, that money, might, that money bag might be too high. He is struggling hard. Browns defense dominated the Titans. Had five sacks and a 27-3 win. Watson looked like a human, minus that Stupid behind the line scrimmage pass. It's like we're all watching that game. We're just shaking our head, like, dude, what are you doing? Uh, Cooper, seven receptions, 116 yards. He should have had two touchdowns, but he had one. That one that got called back. Brutal for fantasy guys. He was clearly in. Don't blow the whistle, refs. Wait till he scores, then review it. Um, Tennessee offense only had 94 total yards. Um, Tannehill can't throw the ball. They can't get a run game going, so they know that Tannehill can't throw. So they're just going to let Derek. And Derek Henry's not as explosive as he once was. Apologies if you drafted him in fantasy because he is a dud as of right now. Lions beat the Falcons. Detroit looking good. Twenty, to, they beat him twenty to six. Goff had one touchdown in the air. He had a rushing yard, so he kind of did, did. He did well. He did well. He kind of controlled that offense. Didn't force anything. Didn't turn the ball over. Brown, St. Brown had nine yard, nine, nine reception, one hundred two yards, and Atlanta's offense had no rushing game, uh, relying on that quarterback. It didn't look good. Uh, their tight end was non-existent. So, Falcons, you know, they had a great game against Green Bay. They beat them, but once. That once they can't run the ball, they ran all over Green Bay, but couldn't run the ball here, and their offense was kind of just very plain vanilla. Packers rally from 17-0 to score all 18 points in the fourth quarter. They scored all their points in the fourth quarter. Olave had, I'm sorry, Love had 259 yards, touchdown interception, and a rushing touchdown. Um, protected the ball, didn't have a lot of turnovers, looked okay. Olave had a, over 100 yards receiving on eight catches. Dobbs had one touchdown on 75 yards. Both teams combined for 119 penalty yards. It was a sloppy game, defensive battle, but Green Bay uh, came at it and scored um, all their points in the fourth quarter and ended up coming back and win. And they had, they had four sacks and knocked Carr out of the game, hurt his shoulder. Winston came in and looked subpar at best. Dolphins dominated the Broncos. Not going to talk much about that. 70-20, like I said, two of four touchdowns. Their, rush, their, rush, their dominant uh, running back room had five touchdowns. Denver, I don't have enough time to talk about y'all in here. Y'all got to figure something out. You're on the potential to go 0-4, Russell Wilson, Sean Payton, all this nonsense. I, I don't have any words. I don't know what to talk about. I, I just don't. Figure it out. Uh, Bills dominated Washington 37-3. Sam House struggled. Looked like an actual second-year guy. Four interceptions. Uh, Washington's offense had no offense, obviously. Three points. Allen had 218 yards of touchdown. Um, average play. Uh, average digs had 111 yards. So... Um, one and two Chargers outlets, 0-3 Vikings, same thing with the Vikings. Vikings, y'all have Justin Jefferson 
and your offense can't score. You've got Hawkinson has been doing well. It was an offensive shootout. Herbert had over 400 yards in the air, three touchdowns. Allen had 18 receptions, 215 yards. Offensive battle, no one could stop the ball. Cousins had an interception, but he had 360, 367 yards and a touchdown, and Justin Jefferson had seven receptions. All for the third straight game, has was one yard short for 150 and 149, and he actually had a touchdown, which was fantastic. Both teams had over 475 total yards. So Minnesota's defense and obviously the Chargers defense, both why they're one and two slash one and three, zero oh and three, excuse me. Their defense when they get into offensive battles, yeah, their offense can put up points, but their defense needs to get a stop, in. and Chargers defense did so. They started late. Minnesota couldn't get anything going until late, and it was already too late for that. Kirk Cousins threw an interception with like 12 seconds left in the end zone. So that was that was that's that's been the Vikes season. Uh, Patriots beat the struggling Jets and real not real game to talk about. Dud of a game. Wilson was 18 for 36, sacked three times. Can't throw the ball, can't get the ball to his guys, and he's got guys that do it. I don't, I'm not sure why they are. The Jets are hanging on to Wilson. I think they need to make a decision because it's either you know the ship's already on fire, so why why watch the fire burn more instead of putting it out? So we got to figure out what you're gonna do. Zeke had a great game. Had led all rushers with 80 yards, but both teams had no offense. Um, two hundred Jets had under 200 total yards of offense. Patriots did just enough. Uh, neither team looked good. I think the Patriots just sucked a little less. Um, the Jets had under 200 yards, which is mind-boggling with the weapons that they have. So the Jets need to um, figure that out for sure. Um, Texans beat the struggling Jags. I'm not sure what's going on with Trevor Lawrence and, and all you guys that had that offense, that offensive mindset in your fantasy. They are struggling. Um, Stroud. For all those people who didn't know if he was going to be who he was going to be, he looked good. Stroud had 280 yards, two touchdowns. Tank Dell had five receptions for 145 yards and a touchdown. Um, Tank Dell is looking like to be his number one guy. Um, Texans offense looks to be clicking. He's not uh, zero sack, zero turnovers. His offensive line is protecting him. He's having time. He's getting comfortable. So C.J. Stroud might be one of those people we continue to talk about here on the Bubcast and see what kind of what kind of how his season goes. But right now Houston looks good. They do need a rushing game. You know they they look their offense got it done passing wise. But if they can get their if they can get Damian Pierce going and get a guy that gets some consistency, so it's not all C.J. Stroud. Keep an eye out on Houston does. Um, Jags offense can't be consistent. Um, I think it's week to week they struggle. They look good week one. They don't they don't look good week two. They kind of just struggle. So we'll kind of see how that goes. Lawrence was 27 for 40 with a touchdown interception. Lawrence plays in Wembley, uh, London this Saturday, this Sunday, excuse me. He always plays well there, so let's see how he goes there. But like I said, they're just a roller coaster. Jackson's up and down. Colts outlast the Ravens. Lamar, Colts outlast the average Ravens. Um, Lamar Jackson could not throw the ball. It was cruddy weather. Um, didn't look good. It was rainy weather, but it, it's still, he can't throw the ball. And for all that, all what he's worth, he can't throw the ball. But he ran. He was the top rusher with 101 yards and two touchdowns. So him running the ball gave that team a chance. But if he can't throw the ball, that offense is plain vanilla. So um, he, I just, I don't know. He, he, if, if Lamar Jackson can't throw the ball, they're not, defenses aren't going to rely, are going to keep an eye on him to run, make him throw the ball. Um, Minshew looked good as a backup. He had zero turnovers. That's what you, you got to do in there. Um, with the nasty rain, it made it a lot of incompletions. He was 27 for 44 with 227 yards and a touchdown. Zach Moss had 30 carries, 120 yards. Indianapolis offense looks good. Richardson gets back in there healthy. Slides, keeps his head safe. That offense can look good. I don't think um, Jonathan Taylor comes back. I think he moves on based on what I've been reading. He's not coming back. Um, Baltimore had two turnovers was a game changer. Um, Chiefs route the Bears. Mahomes had 272 yards, three touchdowns. Fields, uh, no comment. 11 out of 22, 99 yards, touchdown or something. He just can't get it done. It's just not good. It, it's horrible. It just doesn't look good at all. Um, Kelsey got a touchdown, seven receptions, 69 yards, and a touchdown. Um, Chiefs offense at over 400 yards. Chiefs looked good. I'm not sure what to. Uh, um, I'm not sure what to think about. Uh, um, Bears, Bears, Denver. There's teams on here. I just don't even know if I'm, I, I don't have. I'm just sitting here and stutter. I have no words to use. Both those organizations are in a hole. Um, Eagles stump the Bucks. The Bucks, I think, have finally looked what they are actually going to look like. Looked human and average. Baker Mayfield struggled. No running game. No passing game. Their offense was horrid. Hurts looked mid. He had two interceptions, and in the first, the one was a bad one. Um, Swift was the only bright side of that offense for 16 carries, 130 yards. So the Eagles. You know their record shows that they're undefeated, but they they got a lot to fix. Jalen Hurts was mid; he should have had a lot more opportunity in that game. 
Uh, Baker was 15 for 20, 546 yards, touchdown interception. Evans was the lone offensive touchdown. He was the real the lone guy, and they had to force it to him. The first three quarters, he had nothing. He was non-existent in the fourth quarter. That's when they used him. Um, Tampa's offense just looks like Tampa's offense. It just doesn't look good. Bengals hang on against the Rams, 19-6. Burrow looked better than when he once was week three and two, but I don't, I don't know. He's still not there. He's still inconsistent. Uh, 26 or 49, no touchdowns, one interception. Uh, Mixon, 69 yards, one touchdown. Chase, 141 yards, no touchdown. Uh, the Bengals' defense won them that game. They sacked B B B Stafford six times. Um, all those high-end guys for L.A. got kind of kept at bay, and Stafford had to do more than just dump off. And when he wasn't able to go to those main guys, they looked average subpar. So we'll kind of see how that goes. Uh, Bengals D con controlled the game from the start. Uh, since, uh, the Rams were 1-11 on third down, not going to get it done. Um, three field goals for them and a touchdown late, but yeah, the Bengals just kept them going. Um, and you know, uh, just I don't, I don't know. The Rams. The Rams had these players that people are picking up on fantasy that are like, you know, they looked. You take away Stafford's high-end guys where it's dump and go and long runs and that type of thing. They don't have a run game, so they're, they're going to make him throw the ball. You guys, you cut out one of those guys or make make him go to like one one less progression and one down the line instead of throwing the one he throws to two, it struggles. It doesn't look good. Um, so let's go through some week four games that are potential. I'm going to make those predictions tomorrow. I'll have my Thursday night prediction on Twitter tonight. Um, Thursday night game. Lines at Packers, I'll have that prediction, and then tomorrow I'll have all the NFL game predictions on the whiteboard, on the Twitter, on the Twitter Bubcast, on the Bubcast Twitter at the Bubcast underscore. Uh, we got Thursday night, Lines at Packers, Detroit's a two and a half point favorite. Um, Sunday morning in London, remember we got to get up at 9.30, start uh, having a few apple juices at 9.30 in the morning. Falcons and uh, Falcons and Jags, uh, Jacksonville's minus three. You got 3-0 Dolphins at Buffalo, great game on CBS, division game, Buffalo's minus two and a half. Another one, which I'm going to be watching with Pops. you got Ravens at Cleveland. Cleveland minus 3.5. Both teams are 2-1. Great battle. Great game. you got the Raiders and Chargers. Both are 1-2, but that's still a division game. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, a couple of 0-3 teams play. you got the 0-3 Vikes, 0-3 Carolina. One of those teams is going to be 0-4. I'm going to say it's probably going to be Carolina. I hope Minnesota's offense goes off. And you have 0-3 Denver at 0-3 Bears. Um, we won't talk about that at all. So... Appreciate the follows and likes and subscribes. We're on YouTube at the Bubcast. We're on TikTok where I do a lot of my predictions and kind of just get some content out at the Bubcast. Twitter is the Bubcast underscore and Instagram, Bubcast Official. We haven't posted anything on Instagram. We kind of do reels and stuff and stories. Like, subscribe, follow. We appreciate y'all. I'm going to be posting all my updates for NFL tomorrow, college football tomorrow, FBS and Top 25 on the whiteboard. I'm going to start sending some polls out on Twitter. So appreciate the like and the follow. Um, have a great weekend, and what do you say? What do you know? Stupids, out.